Hello and welcome to Courts This Week on Live Law. I'm Tanya Pandey and I'm here with our weekly series where we discuss important judgments from different courts across India. Subscribe to Live Law to continue staying updated. We'll begin the episode with judgments from the Supreme Court and then cover the high courts and other courts. The Unique Identification Authority of India informed the Supreme Court on 28th February that no formal proof of residence is required to issue Aadhaar cards for sex workers if any gazetted officer in the National AIDS Control Organisation or State Health Department gives a certificate to that effect. The bench of Justices L. Nageshwar Rao and B. R. Gavai stated that it would be crucial to keep the information, particularly details of the profession of the sex workers, confidential. The top court also directed state governments to continue with the process of identification of sex workers who do not have any proof of identity and who have been deprived of ration. The bench was doubtful about the number of sex workers that the states, in particular West Bengal and Maharashtra, have identified to be based on the criteria enunciated by it in the order dated 10th January 2022. The Supreme Court reiterated that trial court does not have the jurisdiction to sentence an accused to life imprisonment, which is to extend to the remainder of their life. Taking note of the Constitution bench judgment in Union of India v. V. Sri Haran, a bench of Justices Ajay Rastogi and Abhay Soka modified the sentence of life imprisonment extending to the remainder of the natural life imposed by the trial court and confirmed by the High Court to life imprisonment simpliciter. In V. Sri Haran, it was held that the power to impose a modified punishment providing for any specific term of incarceration or till the end of the convict's life as an alternate to death penalty can be exercised only by the High Court and the Supreme Court and not by any other inferior court. The Constitution bench clarified that the trial court cannot curtail the right of the convict to seek remission. The Supreme Court has observed that the relevant date for the purpose of computing the period of limitation under Section 468 CRPC is the date of filing of the complaint or the date of institution of prosecution and not the date on which the magistrate takes cognizance of the offence. Section 468 of the Code of Criminal Procedure deals with bar to taking cognizance after lapse of the period of limitation. The Supreme Court has held that the absence of motive in a case depending on circumstantial evidence is a factor that weighs in favour of the accused. In a case based on substantial circumstantial evidence, motive assumes great significance. It is not as if motive alone becomes the crucial link in the case to be established by the prosecution and in its absence the case of prosecution must be discarded. But at the same time, complete absence of motive assumes a different complexion and such absence definitely weighs in favour of the accused. The bench of justices U. U. Lalit, S. Ravindra Bhatt and P. S. Narsimha said. The Supreme Court has observed that a writ of mandamus cannot be issued virtually, granting specific performance of the contract or work order petition. In this case, challenging the cancellation of work order awarded by the municipal corporation Gondia, DV Works and Suppliers approached the Bombay High Court. The High Court set aside the action of the Municipal Council and held that the writ petitioner is entitled to make the supply in pursuance of the work order and that it is entitled to the payments as per the terms of the work order. In appeal, the bench of Justices M. R. Shah and B. V. Nagaratna noticed that the High Court has issued a writ of mandamus virtually granting the relief of specific performance of the contract or work order and set aside the High Court's judgment. The Supreme Court has observed that an application for condonation of delay has to be dismissed if it is found that the delay is not properly explained and that the period of limitation cannot be extended on equitable grounds. In this case, the trial court condoned a huge delay of 467 days filed by defendants for setting aside the ex parte decree despite finding no merits in the application. Allowing the revision petition filed by the plaintiffs, the Madras High Court set aside the trial court's order. While dismissing the SLP against this order and agreeing with the view taken by the High Court, the Apex Court Bench of Justices M. R. Shah and B. V. Nagaratna observed thus that once it was found, even by the learned trial court, that delay has not been properly explained and there are no merits in the application, the application was required to be dismissed. 
the prosecution is required to prove its case beyond reasonable doubt and not beyond all iota of doubt the supreme court has remarked while dismissing a criminal appeal filed by a murder accused in its judgment the bench referred to various precedents in which it has been held that a court is not supposed to give undue importance to omissions contradictions and discrepancies which do not go to the heart of the matter and shake the basis basic version of the prosecution witness let us now go over important judgments from the high courts and other courts in a significant decision the kerala high court has recently ruled that medical services fall within the purview of the term service defined under section 2 subsection 42 of the consumer protection act 2019 Justice N Nagareesh dismissed a plea filed by a group of doctors who prayed to declare that the consumer fora under the Consumer Protection Act 2019 do not have jurisdiction to take cognizance of complaints in respect of medical negligence and deficiency in medical service. The Calcutta High Court on 3rd March ordered a CBI probe in another matter pertaining to the alleged illegal appointment of assistant teachers in state run schools in West Bengal. The court was adjudicating upon a batch of pleas alleging the illegal appointment of assistant teachers for classes 9 and 10 in state run schools pertaining to the West Bengal state level selection test on the purported recommendation by the West Bengal School Service Commission. The court had earlier ordered for a CBI probe in a similar matter after observing that such a scam with regards to public employment could not have taken place without the complicity of people in power in the state machinery. Refusing to quash an FIR alleging sexual harassment of a female employee at workplace, the Delhi High Court has sought a detailed status report from the police under the signatures of the DCP concerned. Justice Mukta Gupta sought a detailed status report in the matter. after carrying out a proper investigation the court was dealing with a petition seeking quashing of fir on the complaint of the woman being respondent number 2 on the ground that the parties had entered into a settlement the matter will now be heard on march 24th the allahabad high court has observed that as per provisions of section 72 subsection 7 of the uttar pradesh excise act 1910 a civil appeal against the order of the confiscation passed by the district magistrate would lie before the district judge of the respective district the bench of justice sanjay kumar singh made this observation in light of the notification issued in the year 1978 by the up government wherein the appellate judicial authority appointed by the state government is district judge regarding the confiscation of a vehicle under the act a delhi court on 5th march denied bail to former aam aadmi party councillor tahir hussain in a money laundering case registered against him in connection with the northeast delhi riots of 2020 additional session judge amitabh rawat denied bail to hussain in a case registered by the enforcement directorate under sections 3 4 and 70 of prevention of money laundering act 2002 the case was registered after the registration of 3 firs registered in relation to delhi riots With this we've come to the end of today's episode. To continue staying updated about all the legal developments happening in India, subscribe to Live Law and click the bell icon to not miss any videos from us. I am Tanya Pandey and you're watching Courts this week. Have a wonderful day. Subscribe to our channel. and press the bell icon to never miss a video from live law